All right. Hello, and welcome to the Dreams Come True podcast. My name is Austin Henson. This man across from me is... Brian Monroe, the Prediction King. All right. And today, we actually have a guest. We, yes, have, uh, we, have, a, we have a guest here. Uh, plays for the UNCW men's basketball team. Uh, guard... Kai Taves. Yes, How's it going, man? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Thanks doing, for having me. <laughs> doing all right. Doing all right. Been a, been a busy day today? Uh, no, nah, I've been chilling most of the day. I had some media stuff at noon, um, but that's about it. I slept in. Man, that must be that must be kind of tiring having to go around and do a, a bunch of media stuff. Uh, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the life. Yeah, I mean, it only happens when I'm playing well, so. Oh. Know, so. Guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I'm having media, I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, but, man. You know, it's, it is what it is. Nice. And uh, you guys uh, you guys played last night. Uh, that was a good game. That was yeah. a really good game. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think, you know, a lot of positives about that. You guys have definitely, over the past month, I've noticed, gotten significantly better. I think, is, yeah. do you think that's coming because you guys are just becoming more comfortable as, as a team? Yeah, for sure. You know, we have a lo- uh, two new starters. Um is- uh, well, we had two new starters coming into the season, me and Gene. Um, and then, you know, we had to kind of figure things out a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, it takes time. I'm a freshman. I'm trying to learn everything, at this, you know, at the same time. And I missed, you know, basically the whole summer. Um, so I'm coming in. I'm trying to play catch up the whole time. And so the first three games, and we're playing good competition. You know, we're yeah, playing man. Campbell, Davidson, Stanford. Davidson's a good, yeah, good exactly. team. Mm-hmm. They uh, what? They beat Wichita State. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat um, Purdue. Purdue? Yeah, they, Purdue. They, they played Purdue. They played Purdue pretty oh, well too. Purdue. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Purdue's the nineteenth team in the country. I mean, yeah, and you know, like you know, the first three games we went zero and three. It was tough, but mm-hmm. we had this stretch. Uh, we went to Asheville for Thanksgiving. Where we played uh, three straight games, and uh, that's where we kind of came together. Um, in the hotel, we kind of talked about things we wanted to work on, and we also, you know, went around and talked about our own heritage, mm-hmm. our, our, our upbringing, because, uh, you know, our coach seemed to think that if we are more invested in the player that's playing next to you, it's harder to give up on him, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I didn't really, I learned a lot of things about my teammates in that room, because we talked about a lot, and uh, it, it showed on the court the next day when we played Arkansas State. And ever since then, we've kind of like not take off, taken off, but you know, headed in the right direction. Absolutely, and absolutely. I, I think that game against Davidson really showed that you know we were in the game the, the whole oh, game, and mm-hmm. we, you know, sure I think were, we could have yeah. won, but mm-hmm. um, you know, we're definitely headed in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's that's just part of the game. You win some, you lose some, yeah. man. But it seems like you guys are really learning from your your losses. For sure, for sure. Like in the first three games, the big thing was like the turnovers. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot. Eight turnovers against Stanford, which has like mm. never happened to me before. So you had what two yesterday, right? Two turnovers, yeah. And so you know, after those first three games, I had to focus on taking care of the ball, but trying to maintain, you know, you know, being aggressive at the same time, which is always difficult. Yeah. You know, anybody can just kind of pass the ball around. You know, what I'm saying not have a turnover, but if you can be aggressive, attack, and still take care of the ball, you know, that's huge for our team. So I've been focusing on that mostly. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's great. Um. I really think a lot of people, like a lot of the fans and stuff, they yeah. see you and they're really interested in like your style of play and stuff like that. Really? Yeah, because everybody's like, "Wow, did you see that pass Kai did?" And they'd be uh, like, "Wow, he just like I didn't even see where he was like going with the ball." Mm-hmm. What do you think about before you make like those real key passes and stuff like that? I don't think about much to be honest. I kind of I, I find that if I think too much, I start second guessing. And being mm-hmm. hesitant, and that's when I turn it over. Honestly, you know, I kind of just—I've always been able to pass, I guess, and I've kind of like just rely on my instincts. You know, I, if I see somebody open, I'm gonna get the ball to them. You know, and um, that's really it. I mean, I, playing flashy and all that, like that's just that's just me. Like growing up as a kid, you know, like you play to have fun. You know, and, and at the end of the day, like basketball is entertainment. If you you know, there's like. If you're not, watch, you know, it's, it's not a fun game to watch. You know, people are not gonna watch. And exactly. I'm not saying I'm not saying I play for the fans, but for me myself, I'm trying to enjoy every moment of it, and Absolutely. I, and I want to win. So I think that's just been like my style of play. You know, growing up. And the thing exactly. is, with with some of those those kind of passes that you do, at times that might be the most effective pass you can make too, because right, right. a lot of times defenses aren't seeing that coming. Exactly. You, you know, they say like, oh, you know, no looks, no look passes, or you know. 
unnecessary or flashy, but yeah. I, I use it because I'm looking the defense off. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like if I don't look at where I'm going to pass it, he don't know where I'm going to pass it. You know what I'm saying? So that closeout is going to be slower. He's going to have to react, you know, as as to whether, you know, it, in the other hand, if I were to just pass it, you know, looking at the guy I'm passing to the whole time, the defense knows I'm looking at the guy the whole time. So Yeah, they'll be able to read that pass. Yeah, player. exactly. So uh, When you talk about heritage, something interesting about you, you, you were born in Japan? Yeah. Born and raised there? Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm, I was born in a in a city called Kobe. Mm-hmm. It's oh. a little bit south of uh, Tokyo. Um, it's actually where um, Kobe's dad uh, visited when he, he used to coach in Japan. Kobe's mm-hmm. dad used to coach in Japan, and uh, we have this thing called Kobe, Kobe beef. It's like really like high end good beef, and Kobe's dad ate the beef, loved it so much <laughs> that he <laughs> named his son Kobe. So people pronounce it Kobe you know when they say his name but it's really pronounced Kobe like that's that's where he was named Dang. after didn't even know that. that's interesting yeah and uh I lived there for the first 12 years of my life mm-hmm. um my dad's Ooh. my dad's Canadian uh, my dad played professionally in Canada and Germany and ended up playing in Japan where he met my mom who's Japanese uh so I was raised in a you know biracial household I would say and um when I was about 13 I moved to Tokyo and I've lived there uh, well my family has lived there ever since they still live in Tokyo that's cool that's yeah. cool uh, when did you when did you move to the states because didn't you play like prep school ball over yeah here? when I was uh, 15 so, sophomore year mm-hmm. of high school um, told my dad I wanted to go play uh, prep school in the states because my dream was to play division one basketball and he, it's hard to make it from Japan you know it's not like the scouts are coming over <laughs> yeah. to look at what talent we got over here you know what I'm saying so uh, I told them I wanted to go play um, in the states, and so they sent me, sent me over when I was 15, and then played prep school for three years, and then came here. Awesome, yeah. Awesome. So, you said it was your dream. This podcast is called Dreams Come True. Mm. So, ultimately, is that was that your say you were like when you were when you were like younger, you know, mm-hmm. was that your ultimate dream was to play D1 basketball or is it to like play professional basketball? Uh, I think, I mean, there are steps, you know, like I had goals, um, and those goals were, were dreams because I didn't think they would happen, to be honest, you know, like I had goals, like, oh, like I told my dad, you know, I'd love to, I would love to play Division One basketball, like, and he's like, you can't do it from Japan, you know, it's hard, but th- this is when I was like 10 years old, wow. something like that, you know, um, so I had goals like that, you know, as a kid, like, oh, I dream of playing in the NBA and all that, but, uh, it really became like, a reality like when I came to the states and I was like, like I'm close like it's not really a dream anymore like you know I could I can do it I could play at the division one level you know I'm playing against guys that are d1 commits and all that um, but yeah I think that it became a, the dream became a reality once I came over to the US and uh, you know saw how my how my skills matched up against you know other guys here Have yeah, you, uh, uh, oh, oh. yeah I just wanted to follow up with that too so like Obviously, when you're younger, you don't think you have a chance of playing Mm -hmm. D1 and stuff when you're, like, 9 or 10 years old because, you know, it's so difficult to get a scholarship to play D1 basketball. So, like, what kind of advice do you wish someone gave you, like, someone older, or what advice would you give to younger players now Mm -hmm. that are interested in playing D1 basketball or professional basketball? I'd say just try and get as much exposure as you can to those college coaches because – at the end of the day, like unless they see you play, they're not gonna offer you. And you know, if you're playing at a a public school in the states where you know you're not, it's not high level, or you're not, you don't really have coaches at the games. You know, that's why prep school was so good for me because every game there were there were college coaches. And uh, the, another thing is AAU is huge. You know, AAU. Oh, absolutely. That's, where, that's mm-hmm. where most kids get you know offers. That's where I got at least half of my offers was through AAU. And I, I wish that somebody would have told me um, when you're playing in those games, those AAU games, when coaches are watching, I wish somebody would have told me that, you know, I need to do everything I can to show them what I could do. I think I spent a lot of time trying to fit in with the team. And, you know, that's important. Um, you know, I'm not going to – I'm going to do that, for example, like on this team, the UNCW team. But AAU, it's all about showing what you yeah, can do. It's all you know? about you. Like they don't yeah. really – 
I wouldn't say they really care about winning. You know, it's mostly the players trying to show the coaches what they could do. So it, se- it took me a while to figure that out. It seems like, like uh, from a AAU perspective, it's like promotion of players yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because uh, I know that, uh, at least now, a lot of the players that play in the NBA now, they knew each other going through AAU circuits. And, mm-hmm. it, I mean, that's just that seems like something that's been very interesting now. Like, you see players like, uh, like Ben Simmons and Carl uh, uh, Anthony Towns, like, They've known each other for years, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just going through that process. Uh, yeah, man. But yeah, with AAU for sure, that's what's I think changing now with basketball mm-hmm. is it's more of a lot of like me, me, me. Yeah, it's not really a big emphasis on the team aspect as much, especially in the AAU culture. That's why I think a lot of people criticize like KD. Mm. They criticize. Um, you know, like some of the bigger stars and stuff, mm-hmm. because they grew up in that AAU era mm-hmm. where it's just kind of like me, 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 mm. give me the ball so I can show what I can do. Yeah. Do you think that's good for the game of basketball, or do you think it would be better to more emphasize the team aspect of the game? I think it's a balance because, you know, the greatest players that ever played obviously had a certain selfishness about them, you know, like. It depends, obviously, on the position, too. You know, as a point guard, I feel like you were a little bit more conscious of the bigger picture and, you know, trying to set up your teammates and whatnot. But, you know, KD, Kobe, AI, they're scorers. Like, you know, so it kind of has to be me, me, me in a way. But then again, you, you can't be detrimental to the team. So I would say it's a balance, you know. I feel like LeBron, a guy like LeBron does a good job of, um, doing both of that, you know, he's a scorer, but obviously he can set up his teammates. Oh, and, absolutely, and you know, that's true. I think that's the most important thing is kind of to have a balance between that. Yeah, let's talk about Carmelo. Uh, <laughs> you want to go right into Carmelo. it? I'm about to get into it. We can talk about Carmelo. Good God. <laughs> okay, can I say, just have one more question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so have you been able in college to play against any people that you either played with in prep school AAU or played against in prep yeah, school AAU? Yeah. Uh, well, yesterday, Kellen Grady went to the same high school as me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. so I, I had to guard him every day in practice. Um, that must be that must be a really cool experience. Oh, yeah, it was great. I hadn't seen him in a while, so I, you know, I talked to him a little bit before and after the game. Um, his family is uh, kind of took me in when when we had like breaks, like winter breaks, uh, Thanksgiving break, when I couldn't fly home to Japan, I would go stay at his house oh, and uh, wow. his parents, you know the best people I've met in the state like they're super nice people um you know treated me as if they were their own so uh, that's like my family away from uh from home but uh yeah playing against him um then U- UNC they have a you know Andrew Playtech mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. also went yeah. to my high school so it was wow. me Andrew Playtech and Kellen Grady in the backcourt we had a good team we had a really good team wow. I was coming off the bench we had a really good team um <laughs> And guys like that, but uh, there's a couple guys all over. Uh, Elon, one of my one of my boys goes there. Um, I think that's about it for the season this year. But well, that, that's really cool that you have yeah. you know, been able to play against some of the guys that you even played with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now on to Carmelo. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna talk about some NBA. All right. Carmelo, what do you think about him? Because in my opinion, Carmelo needs to retire. He's finished. <laughs> He's garbage. I'm sorry if you watch this, Carmelo. From professional basketball or NBA? I mean, he can go play in, like, sp- not Spain. Ooh. He, he might not even be good enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he would fit the Euro style. No, either. no. Yeah, he probably should go to China. Yeah, get China. Get a bag, go to China. Exactly. Yeah, get the bag, go to China. Because. But what do you think about Carmelo? Like, do you think his style, because we were talking about unselfish players, or, like, <laughs> selfish players and stuff like that. He's yeah. definitely not an unselfish um, He's definitely not an unselfish player. Definitely not an unselfish player. <laughs> um, also, to add on to that, before all this, what did you kind of think of Carmelo? Before, like, uh, like back maybe when he was playing. Like, I've never then. liked Carmelo. Uh, <laughs> I've never, oh, oh, I've never been a fan. <laughs> Even in New York, I thought he was kind of just a shot taker. Uh, exactly. he he's clearly, a ball stopper. He clearly wanted the money. Um, he's a businessman, I feel like. Uh, he did what's best for him, obviously. But I never thought he would win a championship. Mm. Probably never will. Too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think his defense is probably good enough. Uh, I feel like he's the kind of guy like that can get away with a lot of stuff in his prime because he's so athletic exactly. and so good. I mean, he's still amazing scorer. Like, not going to doubt that. 
one of the best one-on-one scorers ever, but he's past his prime now, and I feel like he's still trying to play the same game. Exactly. You know? And guys, when they get past their prime, you got to try and get a lesser of a role. You know, Ray Allen wasn't coming down dribble, dribble, mm-hmm. step back three. True. When he was at the Celtics, you know, he was past that stage of his career. He had to take on a lesser role. So. That's kind of interesting you mentioned Ray Allen because Ray Allen, uh, when he was playing for, like, the Bucks um, or the Supersonics, he was actually more of a slasher. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he was he was getting to the rim more. Yeah. And whenever he got to Boston, it seemed like he became more content with the role of, hey, I'm going to be a catch-and-shoot yeah. guy. That's smart. And that's why he won multiple championships. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why no one calls him selfish. You know? But with Carmelo... That, it kind of makes me think back to when he first went to OKC, uh, and when someone asked him, he's like, "Hey, you coming off the bench?" And he laughed at the reporter. Yeah, exactly. It's like Jesus. that's not the mindset you gotta yeah. have if you're there. He to did the win. same thing when he came to the Rockets, and he still came off the bench. <laughs> so. And look where he is now, not playing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He gonna end up on the street sooner or later. Nah, nope. he got too much money for that. <laughs> yeah. he got too much money for that. <laughs> Unless he fun. didn't blow it He'll all. He'll be fine. Right He'll be fine. It, it's it, it's so interesting. You got well, the the banana boat crew. It's kind of str- Have you ever seen that? No, I the picture seen. of uh, him, LeBron, Chris Paul, and uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Wade, Wade all on like this boat in like by some island, like a banana boat. Mm-hmm. Like it, it became like some meme at the time that it, it was uh, going around. But I think those four are, like all best friends. Yeah, and yeah, I think it's it's so close. strange because that's what it seems like. Those three, and like even though Chris Paul hasn't won a championship, Chris Paul is still. One of the best point guards ever. Yeah, he's ever. really good. Ever. Ever. And, but Carmelo is just kind of like that outlier of those three. Yeah. But he's been so I mean, close to them for so long. Yeah. I mean, I feel like talent-wise, he's up there, you know, talent-wise, but maybe he just didn't figure it out. It's not know. really about talent, though, in, in that sense. It's yeah. more about mentality. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think mentality it plays a huge part. You know, willing to accept your role, you know, I feel like he's the kind of guy that probably wouldn't be willing to take a pay cut to bring other players in in New York or, you know. Like, LeBron clearly took a pay cut. D-Wade took a pay cut. Chris Bosh took a pay cut. And so they were able to assemble a great team. I don't feel like Carmelo would be down for no, that. No, he doesn't sacrifice enough no, to be I don't think a good so. player on the team. Yeah, yeah. Um. And, he, and like you said, you see, uh, well, Chris Paul's getting paid now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when it first came to – the Rockets, it was not about getting paid. It was about, hey, mm-hmm. I'm here. This is a good team, and we could win a championship with yeah. this. And if I honestly think if he hadn't gotten hurt at the end of the Western Conference 100%, Finals last year. 100 bro. Oh, yeah, they 100%. were playing good. They, they could have they could have beat Golden 100%, State. 100%, They had bro. one of the worst shooting games in NBA history in Game 7, and they were still, and they still it, were within in single it. Yeah. digits yeah. of the game. That's crazy. I was really. surprised at how well he adjusted his role to – playing off the ball a little bit, you know, like yeah. at the clip in the Clippers it was always him, you know, like he started mm-hmm. the, everything. But, you know, going to play with James Harden, I was kind of interested in how he would adjust. But he could score, so he could play the 2, he could play the 1, you know, him and James Harden can kind of interchange there. Yeah, it's no. interesting. And you notice how his three-point shooting got better too yeah. cuz he wasn't really uh, I mean, he could hit three. Yeah, but not a lot of open. catch and shoot, you know. Yeah, what I mean? none like, of it's that. all off the dribble, but exactly. now he can catch and shoot, which is mm-hmm. their whole offense, so yeah, I, I honestly didn't think him and James Harden was going to be Me neither. Me neither, I was like, bro. two ball-dominant players. I was like, this is going to be terrible. I was thinking They're the same gonna thing. I, I thought that uh, I thought that, that OKC Big 3 was going to work a lot better than uh, than Chris Paul going over to... Oh, really? I, I did. And for some reason, I just I took into consider. I didn't really take that much of Carmelo into consideration. I was like, oh, he'll be good. Westbrook, but. too, though. Yeah. We made oh, a we made a video God. about Russ. Not one of my, oh. not one of my favorites. We made yeah. a video about Russ where not I one of we my called favorites. it we called it the the plight of Russell Westbrook. Where I was like, you gotta look at y'all gotta look at some of our video, my old videos or our old videos. I I tore into Westbrook. Yeah. I I told them I was like uh, I told them the video. I was like, he's one of my favorite players of all time, or not of all time, but one of my favorite players playing today, and at the same time, one of my least favorite players yeah. playing he's, today. He's a stat packer, super exactly. talented. Oh my but God. not a winner. And you talk about like, and they're like, "Oh, how can he? How how can you say that whenever he has like, you know, all these assist numbers?" He's amazing. He's yeah. he is amazing. But, but like he he all he does, and not, I'm I'm not trying to be that mean, but all he does is really like just dump off the ball to Stephen yeah. Adams as yeah. he comes and drives through the yeah. lane. That's true. He's mostly he's like a great athlete. Mm-hmm. He you is. know, he's one Supreme of those athletes athlete. like no matter what sport he plays, he's gonna be good at because yeah. he's just a great athlete. Yeah. 
but he doesn't really do a whole bunch for the team. Oh, we can talk about let's anything. Let's talk about the rap, bro. Brad, yeah, we gonna get into it. it. He, he right. loves. We can rap. always circle back to basketball. Yeah. Uh, it don't matter, All right, man. man. Anything so, you want to talk about? Good time, yeah, so it's fun. So fun. who you like, man? Who you like? Ah, man, I I listen to a lot, but uh, right now, you know, the trap music is so heavy nowadays. Like that's yeah. the thing right now. I li- I like Lil Baby a lot. I like really? uh, I like Lil Baby a lot, bro. What? I'm sorry. I know I like conscious rap too, though. I like J. Cole. I like I like Drake. I think Drake's good. Um You like Kendrick? Love Kendrick. <laughs> love Kendrick. Good kid Mad City. Oh my gosh. Top ten mm. all time. Uh I thought to, if you listen to, to Pimple Butterfly. That's my one of my favorite yeah, albums of all time. Album. Good album. Amazing album. Um nobody can really make an album like that. A conceptual album like that. Yeah, I mean just having that uh that poem that goes through yeah, the album yeah. and Every time it ends, the next song yeah, picks yeah, up on yeah. sort of the theme that that ends off yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And then the Tupac thing. <laughs> oh at the my end, gosh, that was insane! Amazing, yeah. Amazing, yeah, wow, blew my mind. Um, but yeah, I've I've been real big into hip hop since probably about halfway through high school. Mm. Like I think I got into it when I was in middle school a little bit, and then it's like, you know what? I'm like, I'm gonna be into like this like sad boy indie music, and then <laughs> <laughs> that was that was me for a while, and then I, I came back around. Uh, and I, I mean, I listen to all kinds of music, but it, I think because hip hop is sort of like the main thing yeah, in, in yeah. pop culture right now. Like pop music is hip hop music. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but Kendrick's my my favorite man. Uh, I've seen him perform twice. Uh, really? Me, my friend AJ, and my friend Chase went up to DC to see Kendrick. Really? Yeah, on the uh, on the damn tour, okay. we went to yeah. go see him. Yeah, that, that was a fun trip. I thought Damn was a little bit weaker. Oh my gosh, I, uh, I was a little bit underwhelmed. It it is. It, yeah. It's it's not as good. But that was, you know, that was like the first time I was able to go see him. Um, and it's it's not. It's definitely not Good Kid, Mad City. It's definitely not no. to Pimp Butterfly. Uh, it, it was sort of his turn, his turn into like sort of pop rap yeah, music. Yeah, for sure. He definitely. It was definitely. Kendrick Light kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. he still have he still have tracks where he he's you know a bit more conscious, like on Fear. Or Duckworth. 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 That story is insane. Unreal. Unreal. Insane. Yeah. Um, but then he, he he tried to he tried to go a bit more. He tried to get some of that pop appeal. Yeah. He got songs like Love. Yeah. And uh, and Humble. Yeah. I which wasn't a huge up. fan of Humble, to be honest. Mm, me it, neither. It, it was banging. Like you know, people loved it, but that's not him at his best. Yeah. That's not him at his best at all. Definitely not. not. When you when you hear songs like um, <coughs> when you hear songs like How Much a Dollar Cost or or hood politics mm-hmm. or anything yeah. sort of like uh, boo boo. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything. Uh, you know, he's he's just telling you he's been a one since day one. Yeah, a one since day one. Uh, so wait, so he is your favorite rapper, Kendrick? Nah, I wouldn't say my favorite. My favorite rapper might be. Might be J Cole to be honest. Yeah, I need Yo, to. Two thousand fourteen, four steals drive. I need you to get. I need to get AJ, you to talk to AJ, man. AJ, he would love you right really? now just because you said that. Oh, oh I mean, AJ is. Yeah. Oh man. AJ's been like on the J Cole train since uh, since the warm up. I hmm. uh, you know listened through the warm up Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Uh, Good stuff. He, AJ is is one of the one of the coolest people I know. He is he's a band director out in like Whiteville now, but. Uh, hmm. He he went here, and uh, he's super into basketball, super into hip hop. Yeah. Uh, he he clowns on on me all the time because <laughs> I I do like trap music too, and he's mm-hmm. he's like, he's kind of like an old head, even oh, though yeah. he's not. You don't older. you don't like trap music, Ryan? Not like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I uh, I can see why people don't like it, and man. at first I was kind of hating on it, but. This is some catchy, catchy I have songs. Two, yes, man. all it is like, though. Yeah, young Thug, I think Young oh Thug's my a gosh. genius. Jeffrey honestly. is such a great album. Amazing, I think him. Young Thug's a geni- genius. Um, I like Gunna. I, he's a little bit dumbed down version of. I have young way Thug. too much fun with with Travis Scott. Travis yeah. Scott. Travis Scott is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, funny story about that. So when I went to go see Kendrick in D.C., Travis was touring with him at the time. Travis mm-hmm. and Dram. Uh, Dram was all right. Like he was just kind of, like not a big fan. It, the thing was like I it, like first of all I'm not a huge fan of him. Second of all, something with the the uh, the audio was so boomy I could barely hear him. Really. So that happened. We're sitting there waiting for Kent uh, for um, Travis, and to be honest, I was very excited to mm-hmm. see Travis Scott because I mean he's just so wild and mm-hmm. crazy and, and fun. Yeah. 
And, you know, time goes by. We see them bring out his bird. Uh, just sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. Next thing you see, come up on screen. Uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, Travis Scott will not be performing tonight. So then, what? you know, they ruled what? everything out, Kendrick. Later that night, I saw a picture on Twitter of him at the soundboard watching Kendrick's show. Mm -hmm. And then he performed at a club <laughs> what? in D.C. later that night. Really? Yeah. I think it was because his bird wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> he canceled his set because his bird wasn't working. Really? He's, he's really like a mini Kanye. If something's not going like 100%. Oh, Kanye? Kanye. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. Oh, I, my we're gosh. not going to get into all the politics. <laughs> I, music? Amazing. I, I love, you like old Kanye or new Kanye? Old Kanye. Old the college Kanye dropout is... Graduation? Graduation? Yeah, late registration? All day long. Oh, what, what's your opinion on 808s and Heartbreak? Influential. Definitely. Uh, without that, there might not be Drake. Mm -hmm. There'd be no trap, really. Yeah. Might not be Drake. Might not be a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, he started off a lot of stuff to get, you know, yeah. to get to where, like, the rappers are nowadays. Yeah. He yeah. kind of led into that, yeah. that been, like, new he's, way. He's willing to take risks. I like that. He's no, been yeah. so forward-thinking in yeah. terms of uh, the hip-hop sound. Like, before, before him, college dropout, a lot of people won't remember this, was such a breath of fresh air at mm. the time because that was sort of during like the bling era of music yeah. where uh, uh, Lil Wayne was was hot. Um, mm -hmm. Fifty Cent, Fifty Cent, oh, yeah. absolutely him. Uh, like I think the massacre might have just coming out yeah. around then. But then you have this guy who's you know walking around with a backpack, yeah. like chopping up all this soul music. Yeah, but not, not from the hood. Like you mm. know what I mean? Like he dressed different. And he's, yeah. he's talking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, talking about you know just like his day to day life and mm -hmm. experiences. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I got, I got a lot of love for Kanye because he's been so influential to me in terms of what kind of music I enjoy listening to. Because yeah. he was like, it, who else can span that much time and change their sound so frequently and still be great and still stay relevant after Absolutely. all these years? Like, for that's sure. crazy. All right, top five rappers all time, all time, <sighs> dead or alive. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Uh, let's right. see. So, are you talking about my favorite or like who I consider mm, the best? All right, let's start with favorite, favorite. rappers to listen to <laughs> all, right. all time. Uh, I, I can start from one because that's easier because that's Kendrick. Mm -hmm. He's my all-time favorite. Um, Kanye is probably two. Mm -hmm. Then it gets tough. Then it gets tough because then uh, I love Jay, but I can't put Jay there mm. in terms of like my personal preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm waiting I'm, on one that he hasn't said yet. I'm I'm a this is this might be strange. I'm going with Pac at three. I mean, yeah, Pac. Because the way that he could tell a story in his music yeah. was, and you hear songs like Brenda had a baby, yeah. and it just like you almost want to cry listening to it because it's like <laughs> yeah. this is just like one of the most depressing things ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who else is there? God. Biggie. I, I love Biggie too, but like, I, nah, he's not really in my top five. Nah, like that'd, be, that'd be an AJ's. I'm waiting for one, bro. I'm waiting for one. I, I'll continue. You go. You go. Okay, I'm gonna start off where you didn't go. I'm Eminem. Okay. Eminem? Okay. Eminem top oh, okay. five for me. Easy. Okay, I I understand. Just cause not now, but you know, just cause we're growing up, like listen to all of all his. Albums. Oh yeah, that's all I heard. Eminem. Up. I heard. Eminem, I think, was kind of everyone's like first foray into hip hop or a lot of people especially growing up in kind of our generation yeah. was a lot of people because he he had like such big hits yeah. but then you listen to like his deeper cuts and he has songs that are you know both heartfelt hilarious yeah. I humor. Mean, the humor I like the humor a lot. yeah his flow is really good Lyricism, like it's different yeah. His, yeah. his technical ability is insane like yeah. he's immaculate and I think that whole like I don't give a F attitude like you know all that controversy mm -hmm. like that definitely helped um but yeah, the thing with M is that as I don't want to say as I got older I stopped liking him because I still love Slim Shady LP Marshall Mathers LP The Eminem Show and Marshall Mathers LP too yeah uh, like I love those albums mm -hmm. but I just like I used to like Recovery then yeah. I kind of was like uh and then I I never really got into Relapse or uh, definitely didn't like Revival. No, uh, mm, no, and, no. And Kamikaze that, actually that has Kamikaze, Kamikaze actually has a few yeah, few good tracks, but still it's kind of yeah. But no shade towards Eminem. Like he's a he's he's one of he's one of the all time legends. Yeah, for sure. I'm what else you got? It. All right, yeah. Eminem. Oh, I got four. Outcast. Outcast. Okay. Yeah. 
Outcast? I'm not. I'm not a no. Huge, I'm not a huge no. fan. But I'd say Eminem, J Cole. You might have the J. Put Drake Cole. in there. That's what I'm like. What am I doing? I, I completely forgot about J Cole. Yeah, He's J. in there Cole, too J. somewhere. Cole, uh, Kendrick. That's three, right? Yeah. Uh, I might have to. I might have to go with. Uh, <laughs> I might have to go with um. You almost got to put Drake in here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I might like, have to go you, with Drake. You, you're oh. trying to beat around saying Drake. Oh, like, yeah. I know. I don't want to say it, but like, <laughs> hold on. Let me dude, do this that. dude is so consistently good. He like, is. I can't. Like, you can't not listen to Drake. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, He's everywhere. Like for uh, me, I tell you what. That when like Drake first got popular around like, well, like he started in kind of '05. Yeah. But that like comeback season's amazing. Oh eight, oh nine. I was like, man, Drake is a good rapper. And like, I'm not really gonna put him like top five like best rappers, but I love him so much. Like, I love listening to his music. He's one yeah. of my favorites. All right, I'm about to say something. He stay relevant too. Yeah. I'm about to say something. What? I didn't like Scorpio. I liked half of it. The first. Oh, half. you like the first half? <laughs> I like the first. Oh, half. there, there comes Darren. Darren. Dar- oh. I make fun of Darren all the time because. Uh, uh, how much he loves Scorpion, but <laughs> Drake is Drake is interesting to me because yeah. there's so much music of it. I see so much potential in him mm. with songs like um, one of my all-time favorite Drake songs is "Do Not Disturb" mm. off at the end of uh, mm. "More Life" or like yeah. Western Row Flows. Western Row Flows. Uh, what's what's some of that? Uh, Emotionless. Emotional. That was a that was a that was a good yeah, song you off like of. That. that was a good. That was a, that was one of the good cuts off of uh, of uh, Scorpion. Yeah. Um, but, oh, uh, what is it? The the song, like his like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., like that, the one in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says that, okay, when he says that about Tyga, mm. I was like, oh, what do you, wait, what was that line? Uh, I, I can't remember. But he's like, you need to act your age and not your girl's oh, age. Yeah, you need to act your age, not your girl's <laughs> age. What's, what's y'all favorite Drake song, though? Do Not Disturb. Really? I think so. I mean, I'll probably have to think about more, but. There's so many, man. He does have a lot of There's good so ones. Many songs. My favorite one is "Miss Me." Um, uh, oh, "Miss Me" is a great track. Marvin's Miss Room. Oh yeah, that's a good in, one. In your feelings. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> song "In My Feelings" was when I first heard that. Like I knew it was gonna be hot when I heard it. Yeah. Like, this is before it was hot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When the album came out like ten minutes in. I was like, "This song is gonna yeah, be this hot." This is it. This is the one. I knew mm-hmm. it. Same with God's plan too. I knew that was yeah. gonna be fire. But um. I say my favorite Drake song might be like, I like when he raps a lot. You know, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, that's oh, hard. Back, that's back, back to back, back, back to back to back. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'd say my favorite is like, like Ten Bands or something. Oh like yeah, that. I love that yeah, song. Ten Bands or like, uh, what's that one? Uh, no Telling, No Telling. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that whole mixtape. If you if you're reading this as too late, it's my favorite Drake project ever. Yeah. The sad part about that is is a uh, Quentin Miller wrote most of that mixtape. Is that true? Like, is that yeah. really? That is true. Have you, have you ever heard Quentin Miller rapping 10 bands? No. I, I don't think I could put it on there because of copyright stuff, but yeah. no, Quentin yeah. Miller, there's a video on YouTube, look up Quentin Miller 10 bands, and he's doing Drake's verse from 10 bands, and that was the sample that that uh, he gave Drake. 10 For bands is one of my favorite uh, Drake yeah. songs, that too. Song, I'll tell you what, 10 bands, I'll tell you about that. You used to hear that song like in all the high school games. Mm, yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. I heard it. Like every high school, like they're warming up. Yeah. You hear Tim Man. Hey, did, did you hear the new uh, Meek Mill Drake track? I have not, but I saw mm-hmm. that they're on a track Fire. together. Now. Is it? Yeah. Fire. Like really, really. Fire. Man, I'm glad they got that all that stuff situated <laughs> with Meek because that was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was outrageous. with him being in uh, with like the judge. Like trying to get him, what was it like to sign something or to like? Yeah, yeah, that was really Popping bizarre. A wheelie, like that's it. That mm-hmm. was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, they just tried to put him back in, really. Yeah. But uh, I also love Common. Oh, Common B B. That is B, one of my all-time favorite Kanye, albums. That's one of my. That's one of Because Kanye, like, it was the only other person that produced on the album was Jay Dilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was all a Kanye project, and you know, if you have a Jay Dilla track on there. I'm not gonna be upset. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, Common is kind of underrated. He is. He is. Just because he he's kind of like behind the scenes of a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But his when he does rap and when he does make songs, it's quality. Yeah. Pretty much. For sure. For sure. Uh, let me get your opinion on this. What do you think of the uh, the Pusha and Drake beef? 
Drake copped out. He backed yeah. down. Pusha killed him. Okay, <laughs> so that added on track. Oh my goodness, I, I felt bad for Drake. Like, what March fourteenth? Yeah, but that what, that doesn't compare. No, no. Oh, I thought I thought that's what you're talking about. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, the, the added on, like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of oh, Ad- Adonis, oh. whatever it's called. Uh, the story of Adidon. Oh my goodness, mm. over the, <laughs> over the Jay Z beat. That was. That was Ooh. oh I forgot about Jay Z. That was that was mm. tough. That was tough, yeah. man. Well, <laughs> but Drake is not Drake is not a, a but battle he, rapper. That's he not came, no, he's he not. came at him hard though uh, with yeah. uh, uh what was what was that track? Uh, Duffy Freestyle. Yeah, yeah, he came at like yeah. I was when I first heard that I was like uh oh yeah. we got something here. Yeah. Drake is too he's too nice really. He's did. too nice. He's not like I don't know why he was trying to act like he was a a battle rapper like because he, he can't has do been, it yeah Pusha has been doing this for a long time mm-hmm. you know? and that Daytona album was great a breath of fresh air I would say that you Kanye know? production on it too yeah yeah for sure w- when Pusha said you are hiding a child yeah I was like <laughs> yeah. are we really going here right yeah. now like oh, wow <laughs> he said like deadbeat father yeah or something mm. like that like and, but then man Pusha went deep he he related Drake's dad not being around yeah. to now Drake not being around yeah. for his kid yeah, yeah, yeah. that was uh, that yeah. was that was almost like hard to sad, listen to like, uh, but man that Pusha, stuff Pusha is, got him Pusha yeah, got that him. stuff is harsh and like funny story about that is I was going up to Raleigh and I got a text from Darian and Darian was like hey who's Pusha T what's going on with like <laughs> I heard they said something about Drake I was like I called Darian because I was driving I was like listen I talked to him for like 30 minutes I'm like let me give you the rundown on all this you but, told him everything yeah and that's, I think that was before the story of Adi Don happened because that was uh, after Duppy Freestyle but before a story of Adi Don and then when that dropped I was like yeah and people people love us talking about rap yeah. They're gonna love this. Really? <laughs> it's so okay, I'm Ryan. telling you, that's what stuff like fans and stuff. It's it's weird that y'all got fans, you know. Yeah, I guess so. But they'll be like, "Wow, God, listen to soda." Like, of course, I listen to it. Yeah, I am from Tokyo, so I don't, you know, I'm not. People don't assume I listen to hip hop and all that, but mm-hmm. I listen to all of it growing up. Like all the, I'm a big, big music fan. Like mm-hmm. I it, study it. It seems like hip hop has also been kind of woven into just the culture of basketball. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. basketball and hip hop definitely go hand in hand. Because uh, with the new 2K, I know Travis Scott curated that entire mm-hmm. uh, soundtrack. Yeah, like and he, he you know got everyone together for that. Yeah. So it's just it just seems like something that is just with the game yeah and sure. like a lot of old basketball players and stuff like Shaq he was a rapper mm. and then like Kobe like, yeah you know, I guess yeah AI, AI and you know they all dress like yeah, rappers and yeah, stuff like that and sure. they just kind of just kind of transition yeah. to it where it did is now did you have the track with LeBron and, and KD yeah, I did yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even all that no, LeBron yeah. is not that good of a oh, rapper no. KD, KD was alright KD was alright yeah he was pretty good I, but I think was... KD's been like I think KD's a lot more serious about it than LeBron is I think KD's actually been recording stuff <laughs> maybe Bron, Bron was like Bron that was this Bron. sounded like him just talking pretty much yeah, like it wasn't yeah. really no. nothing they should stick to, to basketball for real sure. so Ryan yeah what's your opinion on LeBron James mm. oh god mm. Don't I hold may, back because we have someone else here. Shoot, I ain't going to tiptoe. I like LeBron James, but he's overrated. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. LeBron is overrated because he's just he takes advantage of his athleticism and stuff. He He's basically a weight bully because there's nobody yeah. that can guard him. He's, no. he's 250, like 250, 260. Yeah. And he's gonna be matched up against most guards or most uh small forwards that are like maybe his size, but not as built up yeah. and as maturely like built as him. Yeah, but that doesn't take away from his greatness, though. He I can I can tell you're holding back right now, Ryan. Yeah, don't hold back. Don't tell, hold back. Tell me how you really feel. Personally, I just don't like LeBron James. <laughs> 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 All right. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because you remember back when it was like LeBron versus Kobe, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I, I hate Kobe, by the way. I know people either, you I, either I, love I LeBron, like I hate Kobe. you either love LeBron and you hate Kobe, or you love Kobe and hate LeBron. Yeah. You don't like Kobe either, though. Yeah, I used to, when I was younger, I used to love Kobe. I used to love Kobe until I actually analyzed his game and stuff. Yeah. And I kind of tempered that back some. Side note, 
it's kind of weird watching Kobe do that that show now where he yeah. breaks out everything. It's like, why didn't you have this kind of insight when you're actually playing? Because he's got a great basketball mind. Yeah. He just but. never did it. <laughs> yeah, and also he's like, yeah, you should pass here. I'm like, you would have never exactly. passed it. Exactly. Oh, my God. So <laughs> but uh, okay, hey, tell you right. I'm just saying, LeBron James, best passer. All right, hold up, hold up. Who's better, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> we're, we're Me and AJ, the person we was talking about yeah. that likes uh, J. Cole, we're supposed to have a debate about that pretty much. Yeah. Jordan has to be better. Mm-hmm. Because six versus three, then then why? Why are it? you doing this right now? It makes now? no sense. I know. Then, uh, <laughs> Bill, what's his name? Bill Russell would be the best player of all time. He's eleven. Yeah, but you have to look at in terms of clutch moments. I look at. I actually analyze the game. I don't because I just made a video talking about how statistics um, are kind of like overrated. Like you statistics without context, yeah, is pointless pretty much. For sure. And with Jordan, Jordan, he was a small, he was a, a shooting guard. Mm-hmm. So with shooting guards and small forwards, it's hard to compare apples to apples, you know, apples to oranges yeah. and stuff like that yeah. because they're different positions. But you can't take away, just because Jordan wasn't the point guard, you can't just automatically be like, oh, he wasn't a good passer. No, yeah, he was a good passer. I just think LeBron was better. So Ryan, I'll tell you this real quick. Hey. Who's better passer, LeBron or, or Mike? I mean, Are you I'll, really thinking about this? Yeah, it's not even close. This man, this man over here says that that uh, Magic Johnson has a better jump shot than LeBron James. Have you seen LeBron <laughs> shoot nowadays? He's literally a shooter now. He's better. Yeah. He's a shooter now. It took him fifteen years That's to fine. get a decent I'm, shot. I don't care when it happened. It's happened. He's he's a shooter Come now. Come on now. And hey, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Come on. He led the le- the finals in every statistical category possible. Like I know stats aren't as like you said, taken out of context, they don't mean as much. That means something. That mean that does mean something. Yeah. I mean when I when I talk about that, this is what I was trying to say with between Michael Jordan and LeBron. Mm-hmm. You do all that work and stuff like that. You stat pass, same thing with Westbrook. Mm-hmm. You get all these He's stats, not- you build them up. But what does that mean if you lose? It's fair, but think about the competition that Michael Jordan was playing. He wasn't playing. He was playing the against Golden mailmen. State Warriors with four Hall of Famers on the team. Hey, that's crazy. That's not that's not Jordan's fault, but that's not LeBron's fault yeah, either. Yeah, that's not LeBron's fault either. That's true. Did you see? Did you see that Cavs team last year? Do you see where they are now? Yeah, literally, yeah. LeBron left, and that's what happened. They're in did the you goal. see? They okay. almost won Game One. They should have won Game One. They almost won Game One though. Almost. They should, well, that's not his fault. The that's fact, not his JR fault. J.R. Smith running out the <laughs> clock. You can't bring. Also, Scottie that that, that, never do that. that that block to charge. I mean, it was it was a bit of a gray area. Yeah. I, but that was the reason why I felt weird about that is because they went back and looked at it. Mm-hmm. it. I mean, it's a judgment call on the court, and you're mm-hmm. going back and making another judgment call. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was so strange. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like. He's the goat. He's the goat. No, like, I, I, I still goat. can't job with I'm that, man. Saying, I can't. Like, I cannot do it. Hey, we don't got to. Hey, I'm just saying, a lot of people would agree with you, though. I'm definitely in the minority. In yeah. Like, a lot of people. We're, we're, on, we're on the same team. Now. I don't yeah, know. So. Got you. Man, but we have to do this another time, too. Sure. I'll cut into you. For sure. I, hey, he's, maybe man. off this, camera. This I man's always like, you. I'm going to come back with facts. And yeah, then he, and then he's like this. He's like, we'll do this again sometime. We'll do this again sometime. He's like, don't worry, I'll come back, though. <laughs> Usually yeah. I have to, like, take my time and, like, make a video about it. And you got to, like, watch the video for to get, like, all my points. Because I can't think of everything off the top of my head. Yeah. When you when you have that debate well, with can, AJ, but, it's going to be done when you have that debate with AJ. You think he's going to beat me? I do. Oh, no. Nah, I'm going to win. Because if I have time to prepare, I'm going to destroy him. See, he says stuff like this. And it's, it's like. It's true, though. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. So, it, would you say LeBron's your favorite player of all time? Yes. Yes? Yes. Easily. Nice. nice. Really? Other than AI. Oh, so you're oh, I like AI, too. Other than AI and Kyrie Irving. Oh, Kyrie. So, you, could, you should have seen me when the, Kyrie and LeBron were on the same team. Like, that, that was. was mm. That was my favorite team ever. So. Um, yeah, I. I so here's here's my situation. I am a Wizards fan. Mm. Why? It's a, it's a, well, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So let me go back. So this was I, I became a Wizards fan back in well, I don't know when, but it was like back when I was younger, because mm. I I was like I was watching the Bobcats and I'm like I don't like 
I don't want to root for the Bobcats. Mm -hmm. And then I was watching, like, Gilbert Arenas, and we all know what happened with that situation. But Gilbert Mm -hmm. Arenas, and he was just balling over in Washington. I was like, and they were the next closest thing to me. So I was like, oh, because I'm from Wilmington. Yeah. I was like, oh, so we'll, I'll, I'll watch that. And for a while it was good. You know, like a few years ago it was good. Now it's bad. But the reason why I, uh, why I say that is I'm also a LeBron fan. And I feel like I'm more of a LeBron fan than I am of any other team. Yeah, exactly. Because I followed LeBron. Well, the reason why I say that is because LeBron was kind of my first Watching him play in the 2007 NBA Finals was one of my first times getting into pro basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, So from then on, I was like, oh, this guy's amazing. He's my favorite player. So I followed him to Miami, Mm. and I I rooted for Miami. Uh, And then when he went back to Cleveland, I started rooting for Cleveland. Now now, now I would say I'm basically a Lakers fan. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm not a Lakers fan, but... I'm a LeBron fan. Yeah, especially me. Like, I'm not from the States, so I'm not... I can't claim, like... Cleveland, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't claim these cities, so I literally just followed my favorite players, and so LeBron naturally was my the guy I watched. That's what I was going to say. Like, a lot of people now in NBA and basketball, you don't really see a lot of, like, in NFL, they'll be like, oh, my fi- my team is the Cowboys true, or the Steelers. True. In basketball, you don't say uh, see a lot of people say, oh, my team is the Wizards. That's true. You know, they'll be like, my favorite player is LeBron, my favorite player is John Wall, That's and stuff true. like that. Yeah, I think, you know, that comes with basketball being a sport where one person can change a lot you know what i mean basketball mm-hmm. is that sport where one person has the most effect on the game like an individual person has yeah. the most effect on the game than than say like football or baseball, ba- baseball that's yeah no so soccer too like, soccer yeah. is such a team game too yeah, it exactly. is exactly i think that also comes with you know there's less players on the court yeah as yeah. well you and got five yeah and it's like team. Less players, and it's like you can see their faces compared to like mm. you know even in soccer they're kind of far away. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. hard to see. Yeah. Um, football they had the helmets and stuff covering up their face, face masks. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to relate to the players. But in NBA, it's so close. Like you're so close to the court, you can kind of relate to them because you're a lot closer to them. You yeah. can see their facial expressions yeah, and stuff sure. a lot easier. And also, social media plays a big part because you know you get to see all the insights of all the players you know you like people the players personalities are just put on display yeah you know so mm-hmm. if you find somebody you like like it's so easy to be invested in that player because you can find anything on that player you know interviews or you know close-ups in the game or you know there's you can look at their stories on instagram yeah. and stuff so i think that also plays a part into you know finding individual guys that you like speaking of like social media you want to share your social media stuff Sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, my Instagram yeah. uh, is not as not as lit as my Twitter, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a lot of people in Japan that follow my Twitter. So yeah. Um, yeah, at Kai Taves, K A I, T O E W S. That's my Instagram. Um, and if pe- people want to follow my Twitter, it's it's uh. Uh, at Kai Taves 10, so K A I T O E W S, and then the number 10. That's, That's my cool. Twitter. Yep. Social media, yeah, because I didn't, I just started my Instagram page. Oh, really? Yeah, because I was like, oh, social media is dumb and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I tried a long time without yeah. doing it, but I got a YouTube page, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like social media. And you got to <laughs> promote stuff. So. Yeah, and you got to promote stuff. I feel like it's kind of part of the game now. Yeah, like, you yeah. almost have to use social media. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see why people look at it so negatively, I guess. It, it really has taken over our lives, I would say. You know, if when I was in, what, second grade, third grade, I would have never imagined. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And it, it, it may be, it, maybe it is a negative thing, I don't know, but I just use it because I like to use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Cause when, all that. Whenever yeah. I was in a, a school doing some field experience, like teaching, mm-hmm. uh, they they had like designated iPads that they would wheel out to, yeah. so that every student had like an iPad yeah. to work on from that. And I'm like, man. I had like this like tiny little computer like my in high school mm. like that they gave us. Yeah. And I'm not even that far removed. I'm 21. Yeah, like Exactly. Yeah, when I was in 5th grade or something, we had like they, our teachers said, "Yeah, next year we're going to have one-to-one laptops," which means like exactly, you know, every yeah. student gets their own laptop. Like, every student gets their <laughs> own laptop. Like this is some futuristic stuff, you know yeah. what I mean? Like every student 
and now like you don't have a laptop like that's mm-hmm. what it is you know like that's it's crazy it's like wait a minute your school thing. doesn't provide you with laptops ipads yeah you know? because <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the same age i thought the exact same yeah, thing like, in like fourth fifth grade yeah, yeah. we're like wow we get to use laptops yeah. so we were going wow yeah, man playing yeah. computer games yeah, all yeah, day yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man for we sure. had a good time watching youtube videos sure, yeah sure. y- you guys do that too wherever you like you're supposed to work on something and you just go on like like something like cool math or something and just like play games yeah, yeah. if it wasn't blocked you know <laughs> some of that stuff was, yo <laughs> mini mini clips mini clips oh, yeah. mini clip. <laughs> oh, that was a thing back then mini clip yeah. all that i remember when uh they first came out with the ipad somebody somebody was like yo you came out with something like a like a thin tablet that you can touch i was like what what is that <laughs> you know what i mean like and that came out and now it's people don't really use ipads that much anymore mm-hmm. now it's like hard that. to it's hard to think about it, but do you remember when like the iphone came out yeah mm-hmm. and that was such a big deal now like everyone has a smartphone or the ipod the ipod that was like the biggest thing nobody uses ipods anymore mm-hmm. nobody i mean rarely some people but but now like, you see people in like you'd be surprised if you saw someone with like a flip phone yeah. or a blackberry unless yeah. they're like older but mm. like some people prefer it you know some people do yeah, yeah. I, don't, I can't live without my phone honestly i'm addicted to my phone so oh oh <laughs> yeah. but it, it, it's so crazy at the the rate at which uh technology is moving forward mm. yeah I, I can't even in 20 years like can you imagine it's gonna be scary. It is. <laughs> yeah, I was reading something like about them in the grocery stores and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's gotten kind of bad to the point where we can't even wait in a line to mm-hmm. buy our oh, uh, shoot. groceries and stuff. Quick story about that. Last night, uh, it was uh, me and my girlfriend. We went to Harris Teeter, and it was probably like eleven o'clock at night. And we're just walking around, and we were like, "Is anyone in the store?" Like mm-hmm. there was like a security guard there. I was like, no one was at the registers. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we saw people, like, stocking stuff. But mm-hmm. it's like, I'm pretty sure no one was ringing people up. Everyone just did self-checkout really? at yeah. that point. That's all this. Because I went in that Harris Teeter, like, last week or whatever. And I went there at, like, 12 or 1 in the morning or something like that. I was like, man, it's empty in here. Yeah. And, like, I could just, don't tell nobody. I could have just took something off the shelves and walked yeah, right yeah, out. probably could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's an honor system now. Yeah, (laughs) I guess so. All the technology and stuff they got now is crazy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. um, What else are we going to talk about? How much time you got? I got got all the time in the world. (laughs) Oh, oh, man, this is cool. I'm having a lot of fun. This is different. Like, you don't see... This is very different. Like, we... Because it would just be, like, me and Ryan usually talking about, like, what happened this week in sports. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, like yeah. we talked about, you know, when Duke was before they lost to Gonzaga, like oh, all the yeah. Okay, hold up. Rui Hachimura. Gonzaga. You don't know him? I know mm-hmm. him. That's my boy. For real. For real? You know? Together. Yep. For real, for real. For real, for real. What is it? Oh, now he's just telling us what what, oh, uh, yeah. what, what oh, we're how at. How right much now. how long it's been? Yeah, he's just telling us how long. Okay. Um yeah. that's that's your guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He basically speaks no English. Um Grew up in Japan. Uh, I think dad's African. I think mm-hmm. Benin. Benin. And his mom's Japanese. Yeah. Bro, he was not good when we were young. Like, he was tall for nothing. He was he was tall, but not even that tall. You know, he was lanky though. And I, if somebody would have told me that in five years he would be top three pick in the NBA draft, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm literally like nobody saw this coming. You That's know? incredible. Literally. And he came over, and now he's a beast. Yeah, yeah, he's really he's a good player. Really good. He is good because he's like really tall, mm-hmm. but he's got skills for Still, a big man. Oh shoot. yeah, he's smart. You know, he doesn't do too much. He's not really flashy, but mm-hmm. he does his job, and he's tough. I would say. He's yeah. Really tough. Yeah. That's, That's good crazy. to see. I'm, I'm kind of gonna put Darian out there for a second, but uh, I don't know if he he would tell you this, but Darian grew up in Japan for a while. Really. Yeah. He spent all of like he spent all of elementary school and like the beginning of middle school. Can't hear. We you. can't hear we you. We can't hear you. It's off. Oh yeah, you don't have a track on. Oh no. But yeah. Oh well. He told me the other day. Maybe that next he, uh, time. He 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 you know spent all of elementary school going through. Uh, cause I think his dad was in the military. Oh and, Okinawa. That's so. yeah, <laughs> yeah Okinawa. Yeah Okinawa. Yeah it's Okinawa's a little bit different from. Did you ever go to Tokyo? 
Yeah, it's different, right? From from Okinawa. Okinawa <laughs> is like a you know island town, but uh, yeah. Wait, that's, that's cool. You probably yeah. have people ask you this a lot. Can you say something in Japanese? Yeah. What do you want me to say? I want you to tell your friend. I, like I'm gonna cut this part out and I'm gonna send it, not send it to him, but yeah. I'm gonna be like, Hey, Rui, or what's his name, Rui? Yeah, yeah Rui. I'm gonna be like, Rui, Kai has a message for you. All right. <laughs> um, Rui-kun, これからもいっぱい頑張ってください。あとちゃんと応援してます。クール。いや。ナイス、ナイス。ナイス。いや、you no, I never thought he would come this far. So, and to play a school like Gonzaga, yeah. which is, you know, it's so interesting to see them because they're one of the mid-major schools that made it. Yeah, and they're mm-hmm. like it, always, and at least for the past few years, always been like the top five teams in the country. For sure. Um, yeah, it's kind of like how how Butler was for a few years when yeah. Brad Stevens was there. Mm, yeah. they got just good all of a sudden. You remember? Wow. Uh, you remember VCU when they had like two trips to the final yeah. four? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy whenever you see like schools like that make yeah, it. They should move to another conference. It's they too, should. It's too easy. Yeah, it's too it's easy. Close. Like, who's gonna contend for that? You know. That's what I'm saying. Weight bullying. I feel bad for much. the other teams. You know. So yeah. I love your style, man. I just got to say that. I wanted to say that on camera. <laughs> what? My, my play style? Yeah, your yeah, play your style. Play style. Cause we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I mm-hmm. said, um, like I said, I knew you played soccer. Yeah. Even though I don't know if there's anything out there that says you played soccer or whatever, but I could Maybe. I could tell by the way you played. Uh-huh. Cause I was like, you do a lot of tricks and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not just doing it just for the sake of doing it. Kind of like Messi in soccer, he does yeah. a lot of tricks and stuff, but it's footwork, to open up yeah. space, the yeah, for other is, people. Is definitely, I think playing soccer helped me with my footwork. You know, trying to get the defender off balance. You know. And, and when I played soccer, I, I was not like how I play basketball. I was a scorer. That's it. Mm-hmm. I played strike, striker position, like, for, you know, I only score. That's all I did. So everything, yeah. I, every time I got the ball, like, I was just going straight to the goal, you know, whether mm-hmm. it was going around dudes or something like that. But, yeah, I'd say soccer has helped me for sure. Yeah. It seems like uh, it seems like that's helped a, a lot of basketball players. Like I know it was uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. Kobe too. Kobe. Yeah. Uh, Steve, Nash. Steve Nash played Steve soccer. Nash, yeah. Yeah. Steve Nash. My dad played with Steve Nash. Oh, for real? Um, cool. Yeah. They're both Canadian, so um, I watched a lot of Steve Nash. I'd say, like pick and roll, coming off like the different reads. Yeah. You know, he's a genius at that. So. And I under the basket, under and around the, ba- the basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Finish different finishes. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've learned. Well, a that lot that pick and roll with him with Amari Stoudemire for a long time Killers. was that was nasty. Unbelievable. Killer. Yeah. Nasty. That was the whole offense right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Dan Tony. That was that was Dan Tony like kind of early on yeah. with them. I like how Dan Tony always like makes his offense fit whatever players he has. You know, he's not trying to. He doesn't bring the same offense everywhere he goes. He's like, all right, I got these dudes. Like, this is what is gonna fit them. You know. Yeah. If you got you got James Harden. You know. Okay, we're running everything through him. And we could spread the floor with the shooters so he can get to the basket and kick out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's a good point because, like, a lot of coaches, I'm not going to name no names, Phil Jackson. <laughs> a lot of coaches, they'll be like, we're going to have to play this certain system. Yeah. And Are you talking about Phil Jackson whenever he was, like, basically forcing people to run the triangle yeah. in New York? <laughs> and, yeah. it, like, it just did not work. Yeah. But, um... I love I love seeing that in coaches that can't adjust because a lot of coaches would be like, okay, this worked for me in the past. I'm just gonna do it, you yeah. know, whether it works or not. Yeah. You know, even if it's not that successful. But I yeah. think it's good a good sign like with Coach McGrath. It's a good sign that if coaches are willing to adjust and you know like put their pride to the side and say, okay, I have these type of players and we need to put this system in to make these yeah. players or make our team the best it can be. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. our and our system completely like caters to the strengths that we have. You know, I, I don't want to put out our scouting report, but like oh, yeah. Monte is oh. our best player, so <laughs> yes. a lot of our True. offensive things are through him. You know, that's no secret. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's just definitely a smart, smart thing. I remember the first time I saw Devonte play. Um, I was like, man, because he wasn't playing very much. Because uh, he's you know he's also a senior. So mm-hmm. me and him, I, I saw him his freshman year, and I was like. 
man, this guy, the the hustle that he has, yeah. like the engine he has is unreal. Yeah. Like he, and uh, I even know now he's had some problems, you know, he might get into foul trouble, but that's the reason why I wasn't playing as much, it seemed like, early on, is because mm. he would go into the game and he'd be so, like, ultra-aggressive trying to get rebounds that he would, you know, just get into foul trouble. Yeah. But I I remember early on, I was like, man, that guy might be my most favorite player, like, on the team. Yeah. And then, uh, sure enough, the next year leads the league in uh, field goal percentage. Yeah. Uh, then the next year leads the entire NCAA in rebounding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I mean... Yeah, he's just a dog, to be honest. Like he, I, th- I don't think he knows how strong he is. You know, I think that might be some, where some of the fouls come from. But. I, I remember seeing him, like, from his freshman year to his sophomore year, like, his body. Oh, really? oh yeah. yeah, he got really He bushed. got huge, oh, really? yeah. huge, wow. crazy, man. That's crazy. Wait, what's it like throwing an alley to him? I would love to throw an alley to Devontae. I'm not good at it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I was I've like. Only, I only have I've thrown a couple. Of, I don't know. Like, for some reason, I, I can't throw lobs very well. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm still trying to learn, but. You know, the coaches just tell me like just throw it up, you know, anywhere near the rim because mm-hmm. he'll catch it. And mm-hmm. it's really been like that. So, uh, yeah, anybody can do it. You just throw it up near the rim, and he's gonna <laughs> catch it for you. So, yeah, yeah. please, uh, please tell Devonte to watch this. Devonte, can I please throw you an alley you Please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please. That would be so fun. <laughs> but uh, it is. It does feel good when he when you just throw it up and he goes. Yeah, it's know, so cool, it, so. man. Never gets old. I mean the. And the the audience just goes wild every yeah. time something like that happens. Yeah, for sure. And they That's go wild like when you do something crazy, like those crazy moves you do, and then like the no looks and stuff. Uh-huh. I don't know if you know it, but like we stood like up at the top, kind of. Uh-huh. You can just hear everybody around go like, "Oh, really? yeah." I, I don't hear much during the game, honestly. So <laughs> it's incredible. It, I I always, for a long time, I didn't know if momentum was like a like a real thing, but man, oh man. Like, yeah. whenever you have a, like, when Trask is rocking like that, yeah. and it just seems like nothing can go wrong. Yeah, and, sure. But I, I, how's that from, like, your end? You say you don't hear very much whenever you're you're playing? Yeah, I mean, I can hear it when it, you know, when it's loud, you know, but uh, I don't hear, like, every single ooh and ah, but... I'm sure you're trying to pay attention to what's exactly, going on in the court. Exactly, you know, I'm not really paying attention to that, but when, like, yesterday, I think in yesterday's game, some, maybe in the middle of the first half, we went on a little, like, 12 old run yeah I remember like that. that I could hear that one you know like <laughs> <laughs> the third or fourth three went in and it, it was super loud and that really does help us like we always appreciate when the fans are you know rocking with us because momentum is everything in basketball you know you have runs yeah. and your your team is going to have runs and the other team is going to have runs and so you just try to sustain their run and try to keep going on your own run at the same time and the crowd definitely has a plays a big part of that yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, so y'all about ready to wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man, for coming on. Thank you. And uh, gosh, incredible. Hey, if you if you want to ask any other any other players if they want to come on, or if you want to come back on again, or if you want to come back on again, work on it for sure, for sure. Thanks for having me. This has been this has been really fun. Super fun. I liked it. Yeah, no problem, man. That is the conclusion (laughs) of this Dreams Come True podcast. Uh, Thank you, Kai Taves. And uh, you want to just go ahead and real quick shout out your uh, your Insta and your Twitter again real quick? Oh, yeah. My Instagram is uh, at Kai Taves, K-A-I-T-O-E-W-S. Twitter handle is uh, at Kai Taves 10, K-A-I-T-O-E-W-S, and the number 10. Awesome, man. All right. I'm Austin Henson. That's Ryan Monroe, and we are ready to 